Welcome to a first introduction of Web Update for Delphi. My name is Christian Budde and I'm working as a freelancer in software development and multimedia consulting. Let's start by having a look what this actually is. Web Update for Delphi is a bunch of code containing a library, some tools and some examples about how to use it. It is meant to perform an automatic update over the internet. But how does it work in particular? Using a supplied authoring tool, you create snapshots of your application at a given state. The snapshot information, like size and timestamps of the files, is stored in JSON files. These, along with the application files, can easily be copied or uploaded to a server by using the FTP protocol. Now the client only needs to check if the snapshot is newer than the local files. The tool supports different channels like stable, better, alpha or nightly or whatever you come up with. Once the update process is triggered, a helper tool is started which performs the update. This is necessary in order to replace even the application's executable files. It uses a plain HTTP or HTTPS connection to download the files from the World Wide Web. In order to keep the tool itself lightweight, the update helper itself can be downloaded from the Internet first. This will also allow you to be able to update the update helper in the future. Now, let's have a closer look at the tools which are shipped. All tools come with full source code. First, we start by looking at the authoring tool, which is responsible for creating the initial snapshots. In the upper list view, all channels can be spotted. A new channel can be added by pressing the button that reads Add Channel. And likewise, a channel can be deleted by pressing the button Delete Channel. In order to rename a channel, just select the channel you want to rename and press F2 or double-click the name slowly, as you are used to from renaming files in the Explorer. The list view below shows the setup for the currently selected snapshot. When you start fresh, this will be entirely empty. You can add new files by pressing Scan Files. Once the folders are scanned for contained files, you can select all files you want to include into a snapshot. If you exclude a file that was previously checked, it will be marked for explicit deletion. For the future, it is planned to give you detailed control over this behavior. By pressing the button Snapshot, a snapshot based on the currently selected files is created. Depending on the options, it can also immediately be copied or uploaded to a server. In case you have not specified automatic copying or uploading, you can perform this at any time by pressing the dedicated button Copy Upload on the upper right. Typically, you may want to automate snapshot creation, for example in a build script. This can be done easily by using the command line tool. Depending on the supplied commands and options, the snapshots can be created and uploaded by just a single call. In order to fit perfectly into build scripts, all project options, like upload path, can be overwritten. Now let's have a look at the update wizard. This tool can be used for a dual purpose, as a callable update helper or as a standalone tool. Once a channel has been selected, a list of files is built. This list only contains files that need to be validated or updated. The list can be modified using DWS scripts. Once it is complete, the update is actually performed. A process dialog informs the user about the current state of the update. At any time, it is possible to abort the update process. In addition to the graphical update visit, a command line update helper is available. It is meant to perform the update silently and automatable in the background. Beside the fact that it does not give further information about the update process, it does exactly the same as the wizard. Next, I'd like to give you some technical details. This can be in particular useful as the tool is available under an open source license. At first, let's have a look at the JSON file structure that contains the necessary information about the channels in general and the channel information. The file channels.json contains only the least necessary information which are required for checking if an update is available. It can be seen as some sort of an index. The name channels.json has been picked because it contains links to the available channels. However, any other name can be picked by changing a single string property. For each channel, a dedicated JSON file is available that only contains information about the particular snapshot. While the one file per channel policy might look a bit like over-engineering, it is great for having these files under a revision control. 
It's also a good way to minimize the amount of data to download for each update. Since the channel information are located in a dedicated subfolder, let's have a closer look at the folder structure. The index.json file channels.json is located at the root of a snapshot project. For each channel a dedicated folder is created which holds the channel setup JSON file and all the files itself. The channels.json definition contains links to the individual channels and the modification date. In case no explicit file name is specified, the file name is built by using the name slash name.json scheme. With this, two different channels can also share the same physical snapshot by locating both files in the same directory. In the future, it is also planned to have access to the naming scheme from the authoring tool. Now, let's head over to the channel setup JSON file. While this contains a modification timestamp as well, it is only used for sanity checks. For each file in a snapshot, an entry is created, which lists the file name, the size, the modification date and optionally an MD5 checksum. Last but not least, an application's executable name can be specified, which can be called once the update is completed. Next, let's have a look at the minimalistic communication between the update client and the server. First, the channel definition is downloaded from the server. Next, the local setup is loaded if present. From this, the channel name is retrieved together with the last modification timestamp. These information are already satisfying to check whether an update needs to be performed or not. In case an update should be performed, the dedicated setup for the chosen channel is downloaded. A list of files is now collected. This list only contains items that need an update or need to be deleted. Once the file list is available, the update can actually be performed. This last step runs in a separate thread to perform the update while keeping the GUI responsible. It includes running scripts before and after the update, download the files and delete files marked for deletion. Note again that for download of all the files, the HTTP or HTTPS protocol is used. This makes it possible to use proxies or to move the download source into the cloud. In order to compile the ship tools, there are a few dependencies. At least you need to have Indy and Delphi web script as it is used by the core components. In addition, you need the virtual tree view library, which is used for the GUI tools. The authoring tool also needs the Jedi library JVCL for the filename edit control. In order to use the code in your application, let's have a look at how easy the integration is. The most Delphi-like way is by using a component, which is shipped in the library. It will be available after you have installed the included packages into the IDE. Using this, the steps are straightforward. Add the component to your form or data module, specify a base URL and channel and call the methods check for update and or perform update. In case you don't want to install the packages or don't want to use the component, you can also get this working by using the plain code. Therefore, just add the unit webupdate.classes.update to the user section. Next, create an object of the class tWebUpdate. With this, you can continue as you did with the component by specifying a base URL and a channel and by calling the methods check update and perform update. But let's see this in action. Let's start with a new VCL project. First, we add the T web update component to the form. In the object inspector, several properties can be found, like the base URL and the channel name. For testing, the GitHub URL is copied into the base URL property. In this demo, we leave the channel name set to stable. Now let's add a button to the form. The caption of the button is set to check for update. By compiling the project, we can see that the unit webupdate.package.component has been added to the user section. By double clicking, we can insert code. We start with the name of the component webupdate.component1 and add check for update as method. 
This method checks if an update is available on the server. In order to do anything useful with this call, we need to evaluate the boolean result value. It can be used whether an update is available or not. In addition, we can add another button that reads Perform Update. This actually triggers the update by calling web update component one dot perform update. Let us conclude with a summary. With web update, a simple and easy to use library is available that comes with several tools and examples. The supplied authoring tool is capable of a web update itself, which shows how this can be added needlessly to allow a self-updatable application. By using scripts, it's possible to adapt it easily to the most needs. In addition, it can be automated in build chains, for example. The open source project is hosted at GitHub, which makes it easy to fork. This makes the requirements from the dual license easy to handle, since all modification can easily be streamed back to the original project. The work has been inspired by discussions about the Smart Mobile Studio web update tool. A strong influence can also be found in Marco Cantu's blog post about auto-updating Delphi programs. It was supported by my family, who kept me free of other tasks while working on this. Thanks for listening. In case of questions, feel free to send me an email to christian at saviorsofsoul.de.